Hey, this is my workspace where I published Playing Doctor. When I actually wrote it, I wrote it in the basement closet of a house we were living in. So this is a slightly better view. Um, I read a chapter of the book yesterday and it was about my getting into medical school, which took a long time. Not just, just getting in, which did, uh, because I took a slightly alternative and circuitous route, uh, but the chapter itself read for a while. So I'm gonna edit it down and you can uh, see some highlights from the odd route that I took to get into medical school. Hope you like it, thanks. I was accepted to medical school because of sex change surgery. It's that simple. Yes, I passed some tests and jumped through the required hoops, so getting in wasn't completely out of the question. But then, Dr. Doug Ross showed up. That's right, roguishly charming George Clooney staggered into County General's ER and suddenly everybody wanted to play doctor. Am I prone to exaggeration? Perhaps. But in 1994, when ER first aired, over 77,000 applicants, all dreaming of evaluating urinary output shoulder to shoulder with Dr. Doug Ross, competed for just over 17,000 available seats in medical school. As ER gave mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation to medical school's previously diminished applicant pools, the school selection committees became more discriminating about whom to let in. Medical school started expecting applicants to pass the required pre-med classes, do well in the MCAT, and demonstrate an interest in medicine. I happily graduated college without achieving a single one of those requirements. This boisterous crew had just graduated medical school. You sensed their chortling and toasting were more than your typical end-of-school celebration. Rather, the back-slapping camaraderie and booming laughter befitted a company that had survived some hellacious endeavor together, an endeavor I had no desire to experience. So how did I actually decide to apply? The answer, oddly, lies in France. That February, in order to escape the many avalanches crashing down around us in the Chamonix Valley, we hitchhiked to visit friends in Italy, during which respite I caught a fever after swimming in the winter sea. When I began coughing up blood-tinged mucus, I decided that a doctor might be more appropriate for my care than my college friends, which led to a fortuitous meeting. Back in France, still sick and coughing, I went to the Argentier Town Clinic and met Dr. Lacoste. He diagnosed me with bronchitis, at least I think he did. My medical French was pretty laughable. As I understood it, he treated patients in the morning and skied with his daughter every afternoon. We then discussed Médecins Sans Frontières, Doctors Without Borders, the physicians and assistants who volunteer in war-torn regions to care for the sick and injured. Now, it's equally possible that given my disastrous French language skills, I completely misunderstood Dr. Lacoste, and what he actually told me was that he despised medicine for taking him away from skiing with his daughter, and that his wife had run off with some feckless fart from Médecins Sans Frontières. That very possible translation error does make the reasons for my upcoming career choice appear mildly ridiculous. That first night in the Bay Area, lying on the hardwood floor of our shared apartment, pondering the cost of classes and rent, the time required to study, lack of cash to buy a bed, and the need to work full time, my unraveling plan to become a doctor triggered some stress. Stress that caused an intense pain first in my back and then my stomach. I rapidly deployed my two afternoons of Wilderness First Aid River Guide knowledge and diagnosed myself with appendicitis or food poisoning. Wrong on both accounts. Minutes later, I was painfully waddling down a city sidewalk in an ass-exposing hospital gown holding my cup of urine. Welcome to San Francisco. Medical schools, however, insisted on some hints of interest in medicine. I had never done anything medically related beyond injuring myself and getting a kidney stone. So I applied to volunteer in the University of Utah Hospital's ER and discovered that even being an unpaid ER volunteer was a competitive position requiring an interview. Two weeks later though, having beaten out 50 other volunteer candidates, go John, I was standing in the ER where a nurse handed me a two sizes too small, poorly tailored baby boot volunteer blazer with a name tag announcing that my name was Sam. My ER duties involved carrying test tubes to the lab and wheeling patients to the radiology department for x-rays, work that undeniably confirms one's interest in medicine. My volunteer experience lasted two nights. Time enough to demonstrate an interest in medicine? Not really. My application would only state that I had volunteered in the ER, not the actual length of time, several hours, or what my duties, carrying test tubes, had entailed. In reality, I doubted I would even be granted a medical school interview, but unexpectedly, I was. I looked over my application and chuckled. Where's this place you did your pre-med classes? Some state school in New York? Never heard of it. I started to explain that I'd lived at home and worked part-time so I could afford to take the classes, but he was on a roll and piped up with an impressive level of sarcasm. Wow, you got A pluses in your classes? You must be super smart. Come on, what kind of school gives an A plus? A, a joke school? You're kidding, right? It's a joke, right? 
but it wasn't. I'd stayed up past 2 a.m. studying almost every night for a year, knowing I was applying from a sneered upon state school and needed perfect grades to compete against candidates from top-notch universities. I'd taken the same board exams as those candidates. I'd studied the same textbooks as them with the goal of not getting a single answer wrong on any test that entire year. I did every extra credit offered. The professor saw my perfect exam grades, added in my extra credit work, and generously gave me an A+. Joke or not. But before I bumbled out that pathetic explanation, he told me, you're white, male, and not applying from in-state. You're not gonna get in. He let that statement sink in, then added with a spreading smile, how does it feel to experience reverse discrimination? Not great. I can still hear that conversation years later. Never shared that embarrassment with anyone until now. And to top it off, he was right, I didn't get in. I was waitlisted. So I waited, waited and waited, and felt further humiliated by the school's eventual rejection. I should have walked away. But my ego was bruised, and sometimes we do stupid things to soothe ourselves, like texting drunk or reapplying to medical school. When I received my surprise invitation to once again interview for medical school, I was still living in Poland, despite a lack of business experience beyond playing Monopoly. If I could unsuccessfully feign my way in a country where I didn't speak the language and had no training in what I was doing, then how much more difficult could it be to convince a medical admissions board of their need to help me fulfill my destiny with Médecins Sans Frontières? I traveled back to the U.S., borrowed a car, drove to Utah, walked up the same medical school steps, armpits sweating, fingers crossed, fervently praying that a different doctor would interview me than the smiling OB from a year ago. Wish granted. My interviewer that morning turned out to be a highly touted, very kind, and very elderly surgeon. For our entire interview, he entertained me with stories about his career, and most importantly, how he became the very first surgeon trained to perform sex change operations in Utah. He talked about sex change surgery for 40 minutes, and I never said a single word. Finally, he glanced down at my application. I waited tensely for the humili humiliating questions about the state school and community college where I had completed my pre-med work in order to receive joke grades. I waited for derogatory questions about why I was wasting time river guiding or living in Poland if I wanted to be a doctor. But instead, shockingly, he actually applauded my time in the ER. A few weeks later, I was accepted to the University of Utah School of Medicine. Chapter one, thanks very much.